I have Miguel Sanchez with me. I met Miguel through interviewing through interviewing Brad Reliant Fitness, Wes Watson's uh, kind of like group of guys that are are under him. I went out to San Diego. I interviewed Brad. Came back. My buddy told me about a guy that's really getting in shape and changing his life around. Then I find out who it is. Find out it's Miguel Sanchez. I look at his Instagram. He's connected with Reliant Fitness, and he's connected with the whole Wes Watson world. And he's kind of doing the same thing. And he's in my my town, the town that I live in, which is insane to me that I drove all the way down to San Diego. I mean, uh, a Testadero. Gar- I can't even say it. Tascadero. Yeah, yeah. Tascadero. Yeah. Uh, and there's someone in Los Banos doing the similar things. So, Miguel, uh, thank you for being on. And I guess the first question, where, 10 years ago, where were you mindset, uh, physically, and, like, where were you 10 years ago from now? Um, yeah, 10 years ago, actually, that, that was a, a little crazy time for me. Um, uh, that's pretty much when my, my father passed away. So 47 years old, he passed away. Um, so it, at that time, was I was in a crazy spot. Um, I was always in somewhat good shape. I could keep up because, I, I, as you kind of know a little bit, I, I work for the fire department with Cal Fire. And uh, I've always been able to keep up, but physically, I never really looked the part, right? Um, I can do that, do, do all the work that needed to get done. So at that time, my fitness and this well-being was a little bit messed up 10 years ago because like I said I was I was still um, trying to get a permanent job with Cal Fire. Uh, my pops, which was my my world, right? He was he was the guy that I always looked up to, that went to uh, to talk to to get advice and stuff like that. Barely much talk to him every day, um, and he uh, he pretty much was uh, diabetic, um, and. Uh, through all that stuff, um, dealing with with uh, that disease, basically, um, he had a heart attack, and um, yeah, kind of, he passed away, and um, so I was all, all was everywhere. I was lost, trying to get a job, doing all this, just kind of scattered yeah. uh, ten years ago. Um, I kind of, I guess that's kind of ten years ago. I was pretty yeah. pretty messed up, kind of trying to figure out what do I do, how, how do I how do I figure this out, and um, just kind of. I've always learned from my mom and my dad, right? They, they, um, just a, a past history. Um, they were 15 when they had me. So out there in San Jose. So I kind of get, got brought up in just making things happen, you know, like trying to figure it out and step forward and go just from them, you know, um, being so young and having a kid and, and, you know, I'm, you know, trying to learn how to do this stuff when watching them. So, um, just kind of push through that, through that time. And, uh, and, um, Kind of step forward. I had I had I was married um, and basically working on a family at that, that time. My the my oldest was just a baby, so um, just kind of pushing forward. I had to go forward and push, push, push. So um, we're kind of through that whole experience. I, I'm kind of here now, and uh, I think that's good. And where, where where did you was there was there something that changed you in those ten years to like, what was your mindset back then? Because you have a whole different mindset. And I've seen pictures of you um, from what you were before, and now you're shredded, Yeah. yeah. right? Like, what was your mindset back then? Why Why do you think you weren't excelling physically like you are now? Um, I, you know, that's, that's a good question. Um, I think I just wasn't focused on the right stuff. My all my energy was going to other things. Like I said, the work I was trying to every everything was. Um, I guess I put myself. Um, I wasn't the priority really, um, and uh, once once I realized that to get forward, I had to put myself first. And then because it sounds weird, right? Like oh, I'm gonna put myself first, but I have I have a whole family, I got a wife. I'm trying to get a job, and you got to put the job kind of first if you want this as a career. And um, so I was always pushing like that, going through all those things. And uh, once I, like I said, I realized, um, man, put myself first. And from there, a whole switch, everything just redirected. Because I've always been a motivated person, um, pretty stubborn, strong-headed, however you want to say it. Um, when I put my mind to it, I go full force, and, and there's nothing that's going to stop me. Like, and 
like from physically, mentally, anything, I'll just go for it and do it. So um, once I went in the right direction, it kind of started just clicking. Everything started falling in place. And, and uh, yeah. When, when did you meet? So you're, I guess, I don't want to say you're under him or he's, I guess, a mentor, um, Guerrero Fitness. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, How did that happen? Yeah, Guerrero Fitness, I, like, I've always been trying to work on myself, like, physically, right? I always... I'm like, man, I'm there mentally. I got it. I, I, I don't know what's missing. I don't know what's going on. And so I started watching the, you know, Instagram started blowing up and all that. And I'm watching all these people. COVID was going on. And, um, you know, I don't know how the whole Instagram thing works, but you start watching one video and then you start hitting a lot of stuff that are the same. Like, so it was fitness, what I was looking at. And I'm like, man, how do these guys get in shape? I don't understand. Like, I have the strong mindset. I can do this. I'm a fireman. I did all this stuff, all the, the all these, things that happened in my life from, you know, and we we'll kind of talk about later, but medical things and, um, you know, my dad passing away and, and being like the oldest in my family and trying to lead and all this stuff. Right. And, uh, anyway, so I, I was going on there and watching people and I was watching, um, grow fitness for a while. And I don't know, he just connected with me like that same, I guess the Mexican culture, right. We, we, all the same foods we eat, like, all these fatty foods, all these the beans, tortillas, <laughs> all the delicious stuff, right? Yeah, all the stuff that yeah. I like. <laughs> yeah, right? It's so delicious. I, me too. And um, so I was watching him and then his his mindset, he was, he was kind of talking about pretty much what I was thinking already. And I'm like, there has to be some point to this. So I was watching him and finally I, I just got with enough courage and I started talking to him on Instagram saying, hey man, how's this program work? What's going on? And uh, from there... Um, I, I hired him to be my coach, which until was to get my nutrition on point, which were macronutrients, I, which I didn't know um, that much about it. Um, you know, my, my brother is pretty good at that stuff. And I, he always mentioned stuff back in the day. And I was like, ah, whatever, right? Kind of did a thing. But uh, once I got with Grow, he really tightened up uh, my nutrition. And, uh, and still, as of now, he's still a coach, my coach, um, and kind of helping me um, fine tune nutrition. And when you were, when you were looking at like him as like a service, was there any hesitation uh, going into it? Because it's not a it's not a cheap service, right? Yeah. Especially because you're not you're not technically you're not really like meeting up with them. It's like it's a new kind of service that people are are. So before social media, people were like one on one in front of each other. Uh, that's a service. Now it's like these coaches are doing the service online and helping you with your, your, your data, your macros, your numbers, right? Yeah. Basically. Mm -hmm. um, was there a hesitation? What was the hesitation? Did you have to talk to your wife? Like, I know, yeah. <laughs> and all yeah. that stuff, yeah. like, what was it? What happened? Yeah. So uh, that, that's the biggest thing, right? And it, it comes down to the money. It really does with, with all the, all these things. Um, that was the biggest thing, man. Am I, so I be spending this amount of money and is it going to work? Like, I don't know this dude, like besides me talking to him a little bit on social media, a message messenger. Right. Um, and you got to kind of take a, a leap of faith to, to do that. Um, but you got to study who you're, who you're, um, watching at least, at least he has to have the results. Right. Yeah. And that's one of the things I was watching him for almost, I would say almost a year just kind of watching him and paying attention. Where's his mindset and all that. And I was uh, other people too. And, um, he's the one, the only one that, uh, I felt that was real direct and, um, didn't sugarcoat, sugarcoat things. And, um, so I finally got a hold of him, talked about the money situation and like all of us, hold on, we're married. Hold on. I got to ask my wife. Right. <laughs> and he, he has a good story. If you ever talk to him, he's like, Hey, it's you, you got to dis dis decide. Like, what do you mean? Talk to your wife. Right. Yeah. But it's a hard decision because, you know, all the financial stuff that you're dealing with and everything. It, it's crazy. But um, it was one of the biggest uh, um, decisions of like my life right now um, to do. Should I do or should I spend this money and not? But um, the biggest thing is that we all have um, the ability to move money around and change things. Right. It's just it's just the mindset. And, and I don't I didn't really realize that when I was doing it. But now that I look back, it is a mindset. Like we spend so much money on other crap. If you just focus on what you want, you can make things happen. And yeah. and it might take a little while. Don't, don't, it's not going to be easy by no means, right? <laughs> Everyone thinks 
everyone thinks, oh, yeah, this is going to happen. Or, hey, that guy, he just has the money. No, it's a struggle every day for, for everyone in certain situations. So, um, but yeah, that was the biggest thing was money. Um, and then from there, after that, um, it really is the mindset and, and the consistency of it. And I guess you, you start realizing how strong are you? Like, um, everyone thinks they're the baddest dudes around right in their head and oh yeah i could do this and that but the the stuff like this puts you to test like can you be consistent with these meals every day and then it's almost like can you you're, you're changing everything but you're still hanging out with the same people and doing the same things and you're not trying to just desert everyone right but um it's that's the biggest goal or the hardest thing for me was is how do i adjust this but still um not change too much stuff, right? Like um, that, that. Those are the kind of things that. What was what was the the hardest thing? Like trying to get that routine and being consistent. What was your your hardest like task? Oh, um, I, I I guess like anything, being consistent. Like I said, but then like I, I I was probably drinking alcohol a little bit too much. Like to be honest, yeah. Uh, you know, like go to work, come home, hey, let's have a gathering, and you end up drinking a whole bunch of beers and things like that. So those um, that was kind of tough in the, in the first. I, I never had a, like an addictive personality though, so it wasn't too bad. But um, I can see why some of the people that do have uh, addictive personalities with whatever it is, um, how how that can be hard because it's just a, a habit, right? Mm. It's just a habit. So. Um, once you start changing those little things like that, then, and then it becomes easier. But I think that was probably the hard thing of, I don't need that. It's, yeah. It was just something I was doing to be social. Um, and then, um, so that, like the things like that, the, the, uh, drinking and then just even su- like sweets. I, I have, I have a problem with like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? so like cupcakes, fondue, stuff like that. Yeah. Like I love that stuff. So, like it was so hard to say no to those. I didn't realize how many times I would snack on that stuff. Um, so that, I would say that those two things right there were really hard for me just to cut. And it's that one, the, the drink is not too much no more. I, I kind of kicked out, but bread and stuff like that, sweet bread. Oh man, I, I have a hard time still. Like I had to keep it away from me at the yeah. house and all that. But uh, I, I would say that was kind of difficult. Um, and then just be, the whole change of, of tracking food, like realizing how much you were eating, which is crazy crazy to think how much I was eating before people don't even know until you start yeah. marking down your food so that, that was a big thing but I think it that was a benefit for me was when I started doing that I'm going whoa that's why so um yeah that's kind of- you talking about alcohol uh makes me think of something that I've been thinking about and that's kind of like the question like what what is a man right what's a man what's because I grew up in uh cheesemo you know, like with Chicanos, yeah. with with uh, like Met- Mexican background, and going to parties and stuff. You see your uncles, you see your cousins, you drinking beer. Um, like I can't ex- like none of them in shape. Like, yeah. You, know? Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? But like I have a nine to five. I'm pro- I'm providing for my family yeah. and all this stuff and. And like you said, it, it's a it's a habit being social, going out like like you're moving your mind, even if you're 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 thinking ahead, like always kind of like, I don't know, just from watching you, I'm like, dude, he he's like planning stuff like no matter what, like you're doing this. But I, it's like, I, I don't know, like when I'm watching you, listening to you on your podcast, yeah. you have like a, there's something over here still like yeah. and so it's kind of cool because I, I notice it and I'm like, dude, that's how you got to be right. Like. And I think especially for my life where it's at is is there's so many things going on, like from medical stuff to career wise to trying to do this thing, making sure that my wife's good, making sure the kids are good. And I'm like, that's almost like how we have to be as as a just men. And that's, I guess, the topic right now that that you're talking about. Um, Like, how how do you be a man? That's it. Like, yeah, well, it's, it's I think a lot of people are scared because of the unknown. I, I, uh, the reason why I'm like comfortable in it, I wouldn't say I'm comfortable in it, I'm just used to it, is, uh, with fighting, like, it, it's standing across the ring from another man that you have no idea who he is, and like you're, you're basically like in front of a bunch of people. Like, it really, like, it, it humbles the shit out of you. And it, that fear, you learn how to deal with it. Yeah. Like, 
the outcome it doesn't even matter. You just going out there and like answering the bell, like that's huge. Like, uh, like this is about you, and I want to make it about yeah. you. Yeah, but yeah. before we move on, I, I uh, so I fought a guy. His name is Daniel Compton, okay. and I, I talked to him about him before I interviewed him. Right, professional fighter, and I decided to. F I, I mean, I decided to go to Iowa to go fight him. And it was a tournament, Muay Thai tournament, and huge dude, crazy fight because he's a professional fighter. I'm barely like I'm not even I'm probably like not like half of what his experience, right? And so I'm standing across the ring from him. I actually see him before the the fight. I see him the day before the fight, and I'm like in my mind I'm like, oh, he's huge. He's a professional fighter. I'm scared. I'm all this fear. And got my ass whooped. And the short, like the end of the story, I got my ass whooped. But because I answered the bell, because I, I followed through with it, because I, I faced him, it has changed me in a whole different way. Like it's it's made me realize, like, oh, like the 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 outcome doesn't doesn't really matter. Just go do it. Like you know, what I mean? like yeah. that, and yeah. I, I know you're talking about me too. But that, that, I like to learn stuff from people. So. Um, and that's one of the biggest things. You think? Do you think if you could control that fear from before that, it would have been a different, like different, a little bit? Uh, there's a lot of things that came to play. Okay. Like uh, where was my head? Yeah. Like I wasn't training as hard. Um, probably one of my, like a uh, a big step up in, in, uh, in who I was fighting, and I decided to, not train as hard. Like I was coaching. I had my family. Like there's yeah. a bunch of shit that I could say that that. Uh, excuses but it was basically i just didn't show up that day gotcha. like i wasn't good enough yeah that in the and and i dealt with that for a while i dealt with like okay like i wasn't good enough and all this stuff but but then at the end of the day like i the outcome like i told you the outcome doesn't matter like yeah. it just it's it's just getting out there and doing it yeah yeah i i i totally agree with that and and i was telling you earlier like or reading books and stuff and uh, when i'm reading this stuff i'm learning that that fear you can get rid of it is to move like to do that action meaning like go c try to complete something right because what we do is we count those as wins in our in our head and that positivity is what we need because it's just our nature to be negative in our head like mm. and i think the more you flood out those negative thoughts with those positive actions that you're doing you're, you're making something happen you you get rid of them and I think from there you really do excel in all all aspects of your life when you start start doing that. And you might not feel like it because you're so you're doing all this, you're doing that, you're running around like you just man, I feel like I'm everywhere. But the people that are watching you are going, oh, how is he doing all this? Right? <laughs> yeah. So and, I, and I'm learning that it's just it's just that consistency and being positive and push. And and by no means like it. Everyone thinks it's all easy. It's not. Everyone's yeah. everyone's struggling, and I think we uh, we were too hard on ourselves sometimes, and mm. we push. Uh, I guess like that fear of like, man, that guy's like this. You talked about the fight, like in your head, man, he's big. Oh, but we don't know what he's thinking. Yeah. Like, like really, like we don't. He's just another person like this. Same kind of thoughts. Um, same negative thoughts are in their head. They're, everyone's battling inside their head. Oh, it's crazy you say that because I interviewed him, and. Uh... I had all this fear fighting him, and then he tells me like that I got under underneath his skin uh, because I messaged him that we're gonna fight. Like I didn't even wasn't even like talking shit or anything. <laughs> He's all, I was angry for that fight. I was like, bro, I'm not, <laughs> I didn't do anything. Like I wasn't trying to make you angry. Like, yeah. And it was just so crazy to to sit and talk to and what he was thinking, yeah. right? And it was just nuts. But we got cut yeah. off before that. Um, the question was. Like, why do you think, and I guess most of people, and it might be from due to trauma, why do you think grown men have this view, and I, I don't know if it becomes comes from my childhood or if a lot of people have this, uh, the view of what a man is is like a nine to five, provide for your family, hang out with your friends and drink and and be cheesemo and be uh, be tough, 
and hardly anybody's in shape, right? When you go to parties and and why do you think that is? And and to you, what is a man? Yeah, um, I think that's a lot of that the Hispanic culture, really. I, I know there's other cultures that do it, but um, we've always been taught we got to be put our family first. So. Mm. That's what it was. You went to a barbecue, you ate, you know, probably not the greatest food, but the taste good. Right. Um, and then everyone just kind of drank and been social and all that. And it, it just, it's almost like an every weekend kind of a thing. And you just fall into those routines. Um, and then you, we, we all think we're big and bad. We're all fat buff, right? Bigger guys, but we <laughs> eat a lot. We're just, yeah. And we think we're the, the baddest dudes around. So you just stay like that. You stay in those, those, um, those routines. Um, I think there's a lot of other cultures that um, that try to push on that person to be better, right? In general, make yourself strong. So these guys will go out and mingle, but they have um, discipline, which we didn't we had we didn't have a self discipline. You know, we're always trying to please other people. I think in our our our, our I guess I, I can't say every culture, but that's how I was with me uh, in in my Hispanic family. It was it was always. Um, hanging out and we had to be a certain way with the family. Like someone at told you to drink a beer or eat this food. You did it. Like yeah. there was no like, no, no, no. Cause it was disrespectful. Right. But, uh, it really isn't, it isn't. And I think that's when we start switching. Right. And that's, that's the part, the other part of it becoming a man, I think is, um, is, is, uh, not getting stuck on certain levels like that, not being okay. Like there has to be something that we push past. And I think, um, as being a father and um, just getting older and uh, learning about um, myself is we have to level up a little bit. It doesn't mean we're being disrespectful to people. It's just that we're making ourselves stronger and then teaching the other family how to do that. Why, why do we want to stay in some, like, uh, I, I say poverty, but in a, a lower area, right? Like, mm. of that. Why do we not want to be in shape? Like, um, why do we want to just eat, like, like garbage all the time there we can we can make our food taste good and, and healthy still and i think um it's just kind of uh it's kind of a it's hard but i think it's just something that you have to do is is, is move past that and level up a little bit um and and teach the next generation to be better like we can all get better even financially like physically all that stuff is all like i, I say gateway right um, like the nutrition and all that, it's a gateway to get better um, with yourself. And and I don't realize I didn't realize it, but it was it was it was building my other things like leading different things because we are strong, we're stubborn, like I said, and we're okay with um, like a routine like that, right? Every every weekend barbecue, every weekend drinking, we can turn that stuff and use it and go. I'm going to work out this day. Every morning, I'm going to get up and do this. I'm going to do that. And it just betters ourselves. We just, no one's ever really pushed it on us. No one taught us that way. And I think uh, that's part of becoming a man is, is teaching the next generation to do that. It's okay to hang out and do all that. You don't need to get wasted every night. <laughs> you know, like, that's how it was. Like, yeah, you got a party. Nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the one to stay up all night. You know? And then yeah. I'm going to mess with that dude and try to get him all hammered or whatever. Right? <laughs> Which uh, I don't think, I think it's just, we have to change our mindset a little bit. Yeah. And when I when I watch like Guerrero Fitness, when I watch the like Brad Reliant Fitness, all these guys are older, right? I don't, I haven't seen much like twenty year olds, you know. Yeah. Do you think that we have to just go through that at in our early twenties to realize how like it's stupid to be doing I, all that? Yeah, I, I think some of it you have to go through like life experience, yeah. but. I think uh, the problem is, is us being older, like when I say older now, I don't, I don't, I don't consider myself old. Yeah, I guess I'm not so. saying I, you're old, I'm but, just saying. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like I, I told you earlier, right? I always tell myself I'm 35. In my head, I'm staying that young. But um, I think it, it's no one's teaching the, the generation to. it's okay to do these things. Like it's, all, it's always, we always went in there and, and talked about that, barbecues, drinking, all that. And we got to start showing, I think, the younger generation a little bit to level up a bit. You can still do those things and have fun and all that. And, and they're not going to be perfect, but someone needs to coach them like in life, really. And that goes back to that part of being a man, right? It doesn't necessarily be, need to be your kids that you're doing that with, right? You can do that with the other, your, your uh, nephews or someone that's just younger. And I, I think uh, 
we don't do it enough because we're so busy with what we're trying to fix ourselves, right? Mm. And that's, that was the grand scheme of, of me doing this and, and getting in shape was to teach my, young, my youngsters how to do this stuff. And they're not going to get it right now, but the more I show them, the more I do it, they're learning right now by watching me. And hopefully by the time they get, you know, they're 20 and all that, they're not over there doing that. You know, they could go to party and they don't need to get wasted. They could whatever, they, you know, 21 or whatever, drink a couple of beers here and there and, and still have self-control. And I think that's what we have to do is show these guys how to do it. Um, and a lot of us don't learn it until we're older. And then we just concentrate on ourselves. We're just going, Hey, I, I got it. And then people yeah. are going, Oh yeah, but they're still doing this stuff. We got to show them, teach them. So, and what being you talking about that from learning from experience and what what's a failure that a huge failure that taught you so like a lot um man those are good questions because i it's weird because i kind of kicked out a lot of that that like those major failures like i was telling you earlier like i try to bombard myself with positive stuff so like even when it even when like all the stuff that happens bad it stuff starts pushing i push it out like i don't remember it like as as good and i don't know if that's just me or not i I don't know if it's a good thing but i try to fill it with positive things all the time um i don't know i i I don't it's weird how i i think i guess i i try not to focus on the failures but i i um i went through hard stuff but i've always tried to um like, how did I learn? What knowledge did I get out of it? So I used that instead. So yeah. if that makes any sense. I, I, was there something specific that that you could think of that that taught you to be where you are now? Um, I, I think in general, just grabbing, grabbing um, I don't know if it was my dad, my mom. Like I said, they, they were young when they had me. So I... I think that's a big part of me watching them grow up. I was yeah. watching them when I was little. I'm watching them grow up and learn things. So, uh, and how to adapt, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah. And, and it's trippy because to me it's almost normal. But I look at it. My my son's 12, and like three more years, he'll have a kid. Like I'm like, whoa! Like how? how, how that's <laughs> right. Yeah. That's nuts. So, um, I think just in general, growing up, watching my parents adapt and like. They were, they're struggling all the time, but out of somewhere, I don't know how they're, they're just strong people, I guess, but they, they always came up above and, and they don't, they didn't do it all by themselves by no means, you know, they yeah. had family and all these things like that helping out. But, um, that's what I took is watching them. How, how do you adapt like that? How did you make that happen? And, you know, um, I think those are the big parts and, and just being aware. I've always kind of been aware. I and I don't know if it comes from that. It comes from me being the oldest and watching, always getting told, watch out for your brother and sister, do that. Do yeah. that. So I'm always paying attention and, and watching people. So I adapt. Um, big things, big things like, um, um, you know, the, the, the medical stuff for my son, you know, those, those things right there changed my aspect of thinking and, and life. Like, man, look at what he's going through. Like, so if we didn't get it on camera, but so if, what what is your son going through? Yeah, so um, at six months old, my son started getting sick. We were trying to figure out like what is going on here, you know, um, vomiting green, green, um, vomiting green, basically. And we're like, what's yeah. going on? So we took him to doctors. He ended up having a mal rotation, meaning his intestines was twisted. So they did a emergency surgery and um, thought we fixed the problem, right? Cool, he was in there, you know, and it's a pretty evasive. They take out the whole intestines and do a whole procedure, right? Um, in there for about a week and a half and everything was going great. And then he started throwing up the same, same thing. So we're like, what's going on here? They were like, oh, it must be another malrotation. So do another surgery, same kind of stuff. So we're in there for a while. Um, anyways, um, figure out that he has a, um, uh, like slow motility, basically meaning motility in his intestines. Um, it, doesn't move like all of us, right? Yeah. Um, and the problem with that is, is the nutri- or the intestines grabs all the nutrition for food. So what, with his situation, um, it swells up. So it'll swell up, meaning it'll shut. So nothing goes through. So he doesn't get nutrition, doesn't get, nothing passes, his stomach will just blow up. So we did some testing and um, th- this is oh, surgeries, all kinds of surgeries yeah. and all that. And finally went to San Francisco, did some testing and found out that's what he had. It was a rare condition. I think, um, 
I, and I'm horrible with the name. My wife's like, like you said, super mom. She knows all yeah. the names um, with it, but it's basically a pseudo obstruction. Um, at that time when we did the testing, it was like five kids in the world that's been uh, diagnosed with it. There's more people, that, more kids that probably had it, but actually tested and checked. So um, we've been dealing with that. Um, major surgeries he's had, um, still trying to figure that out. My son's um, a little trooper. He's been through probably, I would say, seven major surgeries. He's only nine now. Um, and now he has uh, Broviac patches and he's hooked up to TPN and lipids um, every night and some other medical stuff that he has to get done with. But And you changing your lifestyle and you changing your body you physically, how much of that is for him? I think um, a lot a lot of it, there's two things, right, is, is the kids, is showing him that he's he's strong no matter what and, and it is really about what we eat and what we take in to our body to to help us a little bit better there's crazy disease that will take you out no matter what you can be the healthiest person in the mm -hmm. world right but if we can help with the nutrition the food it'll get better like everything he has right now is reversible it's just trying to find that one key little thing like same thing with me like trying to find that one key thing that nutrition that i finally someone helped me unlock it so we're, yeah. that's what we're working on with him the second thing is um am i going to be around you know my i said my father passed away at 47 right yeah, yeah. and i know he was diabetic and all that and my dad was a worker just didn't do anything didn't go on vacations didn't do exercise just straight work right <laughs> <Have you heard laughs> what we talked about earlier yeah, yeah yeah so he worked work 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 um he worked in san jose lived over here he every day there and back to his travel to, um was, was like 20 years back and forth uh, um, and so there's a part of me inside um, is going, shit, is, is something going to happen to me? I don't know. Well, let's fix something to mm -hmm. make sure that I can do the, I, I don't know, maybe it will happen, right? But I'm going to fight and make sure that I can do whatever I can to make sure that it doesn't happen. And uh, I think those two things right there is to show the kids that they, they can make a big change in their life, their um, uh, their mindset, and um, also for me to be around, man. I, I can't just work and be with Cal Fire the whole this time and then retire and then pass away, right? That's, yeah. I don't want to be that guy. You know, that's still I'm still young enough to go and do things. So, yeah, you're you're uh, you're resilient, man. Like just hearing a little bit of of your your childhood about how your parents were young and then and then your son and then like your Cal Fire man. Like I just hearing it, I just like just thinking like. Man, why are people so resilient? Like, why? How do they get like that? Because there's a lot of people. You probably know some people that have been hit with hard times, and they just can't. They can't seem to find it and get above it. Yeah. Like, what is it that's that's helping you? Truthfully, I think we talked about it a little bit. I think um, it's that Mexican culture. We're stubborn. <laughs> we, we really are. Yeah. And I think that I think what happened is I I just grabbed that stubbornness and switched it to to turn it into positive stuff like like no matter what nothing's going to stop me with that like i know all these things are going to go on i'm just going to adapt and push forward to that thing and i think for me that i, I think that's what's happening I'm, I'm, and i'm getting older now i'm starting to realize whoa like why but I, i'm stubborn like that no i will i will do this like the workouts i don't care what time it is or not i'll, I'll do them oh my food i gotta do that oh i gotta drive go to work and then drive to the hospital and pick pick up my my wife or my son whatever it is it's, it's just I can do it. I'm stubborn enough and, and we're strong enough. And I finally realized that grabbing all those things that we learned that we thought are negative things, right? Yeah. Oh, that guy, he's just stubborn. You don't want to do whatever. But you, if you grab those things and take them as, as um, I guess, uh, tools, it, it changed your life, man. Like, really? Like, I, I, it really is. And, and I think, and that competitive, we're being, we're always competitive too. I think it's probably growing up and, you know, your cousins and all that. You're always trying to be better. Um, but the, I grabbed that too. Like, I got to be better. I can. If that person could do it, I can do it. And that, yeah. I've always said it like that. And, and um, that's kind of where I'm at. Is thinking like that. So Cal Fire, um, how did you become a fireman? And when did you like? F were you f like fully a fireman? Yeah. When did yeah. you become a fireman? Um, so that's cool. Like I, when I was when I was younger, I, I kind of mentioned a little bit. My one of my uncles worked for San Jose City, which I thought was co so cool. That whole the fire department right thing. We we used to go visit them a little bit and see it. I'm like, wow, that's kind of cool. And I, and growing up, I've always wanted to be in the mix. You know, if mm. that makes sense. 
You know, I, I kind of wanted to see when there's those big crowds, I always wanted to see what, what, what is what's going on over there. And um, I know it's just something that just intrigued me with that, what they were doing. So um, I, uh, I became a seasonal in um, 04 with Cal Fire. Um, I was a volunteer before that just to see how it was. So and I, and I started volunteering in San Luis Obispo County um, out there more in uh, Paso Robles. That's where I was going to um, the junior college. So I, um, I, I started kind of getting into it there. Um, it's kind of a crazy story, but I actually got in an accident um, with my truck and uh, my old 1970 that I've been working on. I bought that bad boy when I was oh, 15. I didn't, even, I didn't even see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but, okay. yeah. So that's, my, that's my other baby. I, I bought that when I was 15. Anyways, driving out there, um, I went off the road a little bit, popped a beat of tire, couldn't control it, got in an accident. Met one of the fire captains there that went to the call. He told me, when you get back on your feet, come talk to me. So it kind of reignited that whole thing when I was younger. Of, oh, man, a fireman. So I, uh, I tied in with him, and, man, he put me in his wing and kind of showed me how to, how to get in steps, yeah. how to do this. So became a, a, a PCF, which is a paid call firefighter, um, and just was able to run on calls. So you did your normal job. Alarm would go off, and you were able to go to calls in your own personal vehicle, you know, put on your gear, and you go help out the paid staff. So I did that until I started learning a little bit, taking classes, things like that. Um, worked a little bit with the Tascadero City as a seasonal. Um, and seasonals are basically during the summertime they work. Um, back in the day, it was only like five months, six months. Um, now they're almost working nine months. But um, yeah, did that. So that was a um, kind of w- always wanted to work with Cal Fire and try to kind of do it because I thought it was cool to go out there and fight wildland fires, right? Um, they do everything, but that was a big thing to go out there and hike and you're out there doing it with all those major campaign fires. So uh took me a while, man. I, I, <laughs> I had to do all this stuff. And um, 2004, I got there. Um, 2008, I was able to, to do a good job. And I got um, what they call it a limited term uh, engineer job. So I went to the academy for the state and uh, learned how to pump and drive and all that. And uh, got, got that, came out. And Limited term, meaning they can lay me out. It was like a seasonal, but I was a driver now and a, a company officer. Mm. Um, worked all the way to there. Uh, to 2014, that's when I became a permanent engineer, fire uh, apparatus engineer. So that, that was 2014, permanent. I've, that was my career now. I'm set. I don't have to get laid off anymore or anything. That was it. Um, and then from there, um, I kind of went up the ranks. I wanted to become a captain tested for that did all the the stuff i need to do became a captain two years later 2016 and now i've been a fire captain from uh since since then so got to go battle all these crazy fires that happened (laughs) and it was nuts napa so where are you where are you a captain now so currently um because of all the stuff you know with my son and all that i came back closer so i actually work in and dos palace city now okay that's through merced county which is contracted through cal fire so um I'm there now. Um, I, I spent a lot of my career in, in, they call it San Benito Monterey unit. And that was uh, all um, San Benito County and Monterey County is where I was at. So like Hollister or Romus. Okay. In, in those areas, if you know where that, that section is. And did you have any, do you have any memorable fires that? Oh, man. Um, yeah. The, uh, basically, when I became a captain in 16, 2016, um, those next couple of years were wild fire seasons from... Um, the one out in, in Monterey area, um, the uh, Sober Honest fire, um, which was a big one, spent a long time out there, months out there on that fire. Um, the Napa fires um, went out there to do those. Um, um, and when you when you talk about these these fires and you spend months out there, like for some reason I can't wrap my head around it. Like, I think like you just go in there one day, you grab the, you grab the hose and you're just like, shh, like just putting it out. Like when you say months, are you in one spot just fighting the fire? Like what are you, yeah, so, what um, are you doing to fight a fire? Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, it's a little bit crazy. Like, I, there's a whole bunch of different stuff, but there's some, um, what they call the head of the fire. We can be on active parts of the fire because it's so big, right? Just to say it's 10 acres for now, but those things yeah. were massive, but 10 acres, there's, the head of the fire, right, where you're going to be battling like 
fighting fire the whole time, right? We work a 24 hour shifts though. So it's basically 24 hours on the whole shift and then you get 24, 24 hour off and then you go back and it just continues all the way, all the way till you're kind of done and you get relief, you know? Normally, okay. normally they try to do 21 days and then they switch the whole crew um, out. Or on those, those years, it was so busy that you, you're, you went two days at a hotel to rest and then you went back out there, which is, was crazy. Um, so you, you'll do those basically, but you can, you can be on the other side of the fire, which is like the hill, the back end, where you're just repairing, um, repairing damage from the fire, yeah. um, possibly just uh, doing, they call mop up and kind of just putting out. Is that, is that a slower pace? Yeah, it's okay. a little slower place. Um, you're just kind of moving through where the fire already passed and putting out anything that's kind of smoldering and smoking through there. So um, when you're, when I'm fascinated by this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're in the middle of it, like when you're putting out the fire, uh, like how much of it is communication? Is it like a routine? Like you guys are, because when I think of fighting, when I think of like when I used to corner fighters, like I think of, of kind of like um, having keywords. Yeah. Like, hey, uh, if you want them a certain combo, you call, call out a keyword. Like, is it, are you guys doing that when you guys are fighting the fire? Yeah, it's kind of like that. Um, throughout the, the, your career, you're always training to do certain things. Um, it's uh, it's kind of considered as wooey, they call it. Wildland inter interface, right? Urban interface. That, there's a whole there's a whole pamphlet that you're always training about and it's mm. talking about all of these breakdowns and it, it there's a lot of stuff in it but like s facts and all there's there's how to defend things how to attack attack things on these fires so what we go out is in and normally are called strike teams right um five engines of battalion chief so this guy is a little bit more mobile and he's um He's the battalion chief is in like a, a pickup usually. So what he's doing is kind of scouting everything. And then he's giving, like you said, almost like those co combinations, yeah. like what do we want to do? Bump and run, you know, anchor and hold, things like that. So he's kind of delegating what we need to do. And we're, we're kind of doing those Is things. he reading the fire while you guys are? A little bit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then we're, and then like you said, communications, we're listening, because it's all broken down into divisions and, and things like that. So we have neighbors, we're listening to them. What's going on? Is it is the fire blowing on that side? So it's going to hit us pretty fast, or is it going the other way? And we're kind of just adjusting and adapting the whole time. Almost like, it is almost like a fight. Like, yeah. we're, we're adapting all the time of, of what's moving in and out, kind of doing, it's, it's, it's crazy. Is it, is your adrenaline running the whole entire time yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely definitely like yeah. those big those big fires cra it's crazy like even paris right the whole community burned down over there that that yeah. fire was crazy and it was like it, there's just some fires that you can't remember like, it's it's like running sideways which is crazy like you, it's just jump like not even jumping it's just it's straight across right like you're like what, what, like how do we stop this like, are you uh it, sometimes fires are like they're they suck because their people's lives are changing. Yeah. But do you find a adrenaline rush doing it? Like, can you see yourself having the an office job, or were you uh, meant for like something like this? I think the training comes in. I think you got to be a little bit like meant for it a little bit <laughs> because I, I think I and I would say the training you can do the firefighter. Let me stop it real quick. I just go ahead. Yeah. So I, I think um, the the. Firefighting aspect, anyone can really do. It's the it's what you see and how you how you're able to, um, I guess, mentally control that because we see a lot of destruction and damage all the time. So I think um, that that's the part you need. That a lot of people can't handle it because we see a lot of stuff like that, and that's the, from fires, people's homes getting burnt, like everything that they own is gone. You know, so yeah. you got to be able to take that in and and just dis, just dis, decipher it kind of like. So it doesn't mess you up. Um, and then there's the other thing, not just fires, right? We go to vehicle accidents and all this mm. other stuff. So um, I think that's the part we, you got to be, be able to control that. But the firefighting part, I think anyone could kind of do because you do enough training all the time that it's just, it's almost automatic. And I, I've never been in like a, a sports like that where you're fighting, but you, you, you practice so much of those combinations. Like you said, if you say something, it's just automatic, yeah. right? Um, but again, the back end, when you're back, you're like, I guess that's the part, can you make you a fighter or not, is the part where you're thinking, like after, yeah. like, dang, this and that and that and this. Like, I think those are the parts that 
I don't think that makes sense. I don't think anybody could fight a fire. Like, like, <laughs> like thinking about it, I'm like thinking about like, man, you're because you're doing something where people want to where people want to run from. Yeah. Like that's not that's not normal. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. But, like it's not it's not normal. It's we talked about fear. We talked about about like overcoming it, right? Yeah. And you're doing that on, well throughout your whole entire career. Not many people do that for a career where they're they're most of the time they're just like they're a manager or something. They're sitting in an office. There's not that much overcoming fear. Yeah, I got like, you. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, like yeah. you're leaving your house, you're leaving your family and saying, All right, love you guys. You get in your car and it's like, All right, here we go. Like this is this is the day. That's uh that takes a special kind of person. So I think Combined with the Guerrero fitness, combined with what you're doing with the firefighting and having those things, it's like a, the right combination, right? So I think the, I think there's a there's a specific type of person to excel at what you're doing with the the Guerrero fitness and then now starting your own thing. I think there's a specific kind of person that it takes to be able to do this, and I think you're one of them. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. I, I yeah, I never really thought about it. I think. Yeah, I never thought about it really because it's it's just the training we do. Maybe after the incident, you're like, whoa, yeah. right? But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I I guess I just always thought in my head that's how everyone is. Like, it's just if are they capitalizing on it or not? So like, <laughs> that's I guess that's in my head. It's like okay. Uh, before we stopped, you you were talking about how you don't really talk about you didn't really think about it till now. That you don't talk to your wife about like the terminology. You don't bring your work home. Yeah. Um. Is that was that planned, or was that they just happened that way? Uh, I think a little bit was planned because I, I um I didn't want to bring like the trauma stuff back to my house to the house here. We have enough stuff going on <laughs> like here, like to bring more. Yeah. And uh, I my wife's a trooper, man, but like. She does a lot of stuff from, you know, just taking care of herself, from the kids to the medical to being a fireman's wife. Like, that's a whole, like, people can't do one of those. Like, women, a lot of them, they can't. They'll, they'll, they'll crumble. So, yeah. um, and, and by no means, like, she has a hard time sometimes, but I didn't want to bring more of that, like, here. Like, so when I see something bad and all that, um, I never really brought it up. Like, the only time I used to is, like, if I had a couple of drinks and all that, and then I would, yeah. we'd start talking and we'd bring it up. And I, and I never really liked it. So, I, I think uh, I kind of pushed it away a little bit, and uh, and it's a good thing or a bad thing because sometimes when I'm gone, the kids are always wondering what I'm doing, but I don't bring enough home sometimes. So I'm trying to balance it out a little bit and to let them know more. Hey, I'm not just out there doing whatever. I, I'm actually working, you know. So come over, and that's why it's nice to come here so my family can come over to the station a little bit and actually see a little bit, and then mm. okay, hey, you can kind of head back and, and whatever. So. Um, I guess intentionally, and then I'm, um, I'm just trying to balance it a little bit. I, I still haven't figured it out all the way, but I'm working right. on it. That's cool, man. Like you, uh, you have a beautiful family. Oh, thank you. Like I, I see, I walk in, like it's home. Yeah. There's houses you walk in where it doesn't feel like home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you guys, you talking about how you guys are and and what you guys deal with and firefighting, fire, fire wife, like yeah. for you guys to have this stability is is awesome yeah it's uh and then like looking back at your life like looking back at where you are now would you even think that you would be able to get here nope yeah. no it's not even it's crazy to think about it you know um like i said i, was, I, I might have not been anywhere like parents 15 years old like <laughs> like how did how am i here right now right and yeah. then uh it's just crazy. I, I think that my parents are really strong um, mindset. They were a great team, I, I think, growing up and all that. Um, you know, and that's why it was a big hit when my my dad passed away. It messed up everyone because that that was their it was a team, and um, and I think they just taught all of us kids how, how to just keep pushing, keep going, like no matter what. And and uh, I think um, now I'm like, wow, like. It was that consistency. Like I said, I've always had these things. It's weird how it comes back. Yeah. Like even the nutrition, all that, and I'm learning it, but I've always had these other skills. And I think, man, I, I really feel like a lot of people have them and they just haven't like, they haven't, I guess, 
nurtured it a little bit, took it. Nurtured or they haven't put it in the right places. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like even for me, like um, like I, I know all of it. Like I know, like I, I went through fighting I, and then after fighting, like I, I kind of just like stopped doing it. And maybe it's like, yeah, I'm like, I'm free. I can yeah. do whatever the fuck I want, right? I eat yeah. whatever I want. But like I have it and it, it just, but I am excelling in these other ventures. Yeah. And I think you were doing the same thing, right? Yeah. Like you were doing, you were excelling in all these other things. But then when it came to self-discipline with your phys- physical, yeah. then it kind of like gets pushed to the side. Yeah. And so I, I, I can see why it happens to people. Um I I do my best with I work out every day yeah. and but it it's those tamales. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, man, like I I think about you talk you talking about your dad and you talking about that he was 15. Like I don't know, it might be a hard question, like but what is there something that you would tell like your dad that you didn't really get to tell him? Like uh yeah, um yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff because I like every day, like I told you, I was talking to him every day. So yeah. even the small little things, I would just tell him. So um, I guess. Yeah. Or how about this? It, it, you seeing him at 15 years old, like. What, what would you tell like that 15 year old? Like, do you think like. Do you think that he even saw this coming? Oh, like, it's crazy to think about, right? Yeah, it's crazy yeah. to think about him being 15 and then him him having a son that's doing this, having a great family, a firefighting. He's probably 15 just having a kid and <laughs> like, I don't know what the fuck he's going to do. <laughs> you know, it's so right? crazy. Yeah. I guess it's not really a question. It's just an observation yeah. about like your dad. That's pretty crazy, man, to, just- to raise a son like you. And it's cool. Yeah. yeah. No, I... I yeah, I, I think it's crazy in general. Like both of them, my mom and dad, like that's crazy. Like I, I, I can't even think, I don't even know where I'd be like, really. Yeah. Um, I, I, and kind of go back to that first question. I think I would just tell him is I'm doing it. Yeah. Like I, I, you know, before he passed and all that, and I don't know if he heard me or not before he passed, but I told him I'm going to push. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get it done. You know, and I think the goal was to just do better than what he did for respect. Like, yeah. I, and, and I, I'm doing it, so it's a uh, it, it really gets that like, emotional like like that because you're going, look, I'm I'm pushing and all the hard stuff they're going through, like fuck, dude, think about that. Fifteen, he, I, I'm not going through anything hard. I'm not, like, <laughs> like that, yeah. he had a whole like he had a, a wife and then um, you know kid, and then my my sister was two years after that. So they were they basically had three kids and they were under twenty, like. Uh, like that that they went through some hard stuff and and he pushed through stuff all all of it i'm just trying to to do my best for him and my mom really like to show that dude they 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 did it like um it, it's kind of it's it's crazy like you think about i think about all the stuff that they they accomplished you know from not doing that to living we lived in little shacks like the the bathroom was in the kitchen like i remember like it was a little tiny room like this one car garage you know yeah um and then living with people and we all of us in one room like that's how we slept that's how we lived like and and just them pushing pushing able to buy a house out here you know because it's cheaper and then my dad you know he bought he or bought a business that he used to do a vacuum sewing like all these little things i'm 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 like man they, they killed it like i can do this like all this stuff that they do and, and, and all that. And I think like, and I, it always comes back to this and I'm trying to push it towards people too, is you can do it, man. Like, like I, there's so much like battling on your head, but you can do it. And it's just, it doesn't mean you're going to be a millionaire, like, right. <laughs> but you can make little steps to improve a little bit and, and enjoy those. I, I think that that's the problem. We're always looking so far ahead. Like, Oh, I want to be, I want all the money in the world on that. Like, Move a little bit and enjoy that. Like, yeah. move a little bit and enjoy that. And I, I think um, that that's what I say is I'm doing it, Dad. Like, I'm, cool. I'm making it happen. So cool. Yeah. Uh, so where do people find you for coaching? I oh, know yeah. you want to push it more. Yeah, I am. A, I so I started um, changed all my Instagram and all that. Now it's a Covenant uh, Evolution dot Evolution with a K. Um, hit me up on there. 
Um, you could DM me. Um, I have little links in there that, that for consultations and things like that. And um, man, if, if they're ready to, to make a little change, I, I'm here to help. Like, they, I hope they understand, you know, I think it's something I want to do. It's not like I need to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a career and all that, but I, I really, the joy that it brought me and then how it's changing things in my life. Like, look at it right now. I, I was able to meet you. You cool dude, right? Like, <laughs> like, and, yeah. and, and the same thing, you're like, you're, you're doing the same thing. You're improving. And we talked about it a little bit, like you always have like some plans. That, that's the kind of people I want to be around. So there's all the people that are out there and they want to make a change with them personally, like physically. Cause I, like I said, I think it's the gateway. Like once you start taking care of yourself, like physically, mentally, stuff starts falling into place. And then you start just, your mindset changes. And then, then you start flooding all that negativity that we all deal with. Mm. We all deal with it, man. Like, I hope everyone understands that. They, I think people think that these top guys don't have any problems. Everyone has problems. It's just, how do you deal with it? So if they want, man, I come to IG. Um, you know, I have a TikTok, but IG is uh, the place to get me. Covenant Evolution with the K. And, um. Hit me up. We'll start Shoot you a message, right? Yeah, shoot me a message. And like I said, I have little links on there. You can do a consultation form and then I'll get back to them. We can talk and see where they're at. Um, I know people are going to get a little scared with spending some money and all that, but man, it's your life. You make a big difference and change it. You know, cool. see what you can do. Yeah. Awesome. Anything else you want to tell people? Uh, no, man. I, I appreciate it, Jesse, coming out. I, th I think you're, uh, you, you got big things coming up and it's kind of cool to be able to you come and talk to me and I, I'm not like uh, no one's special. I'm just here trying to improve a little bit. And I, I don't say thanks. You're genuine, man. I think, uh, I think this world needs more genuine people. And I've been around, I've reached out and I've interviewed people that, that don't seem too genuine. And it comes, I think it comes from not knowing yourself. And uh, I think, I think you've been through a lot of stuff where you, you got to be genuine because you don't know anything else. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I appreciate you doing this. And uh, yeah, guys, go, go set up a consultation with Covenant Evolution. Yep. Heck yeah.